Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Samsung Galaxy Watch. This is the flagship wearable from Samsung in 2018 and it improves on last year's Gear S3 in minor ways. First of all, the pricing is the same, so it sells for $350 bucks for the 46mm version and that is a significant chunk of change to pay for any wearable. It puts it in line with other premium options like the Apple Watch for instance. Now this version here has a upgraded battery capacity, it has 470 milliamp hours, which claims to last up to seven days, but in our testing with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on sporadically, it lasted closer to three days before you need to recharge it. Still, that's going to be longer than many wearables on the market, and it's definitely an improvement in performance. In terms of hardware, again, upgrades are fairly minor. We still have the Tizen OS operating system powering this watch, which is Samsung's proprietary OS. It's not using Android Wear. As a result, you have access to things like Samsung's Bixi for voice search. And other elements of the hardware remain largely unchanged, including a 1.3 inch Super AMOLED display with a 360 by 360 pixel resolution. That's the same as last year's Gear S3. It also comes with a 1.15 gigahertz dual core processor. It's a Samsung Exynos, which is ever so slightly faster than last year's 1 gigahertz dual core CPU. Waterproofing has been upgraded compared to the previous Gear S3. This one is now 5 ATM. That means it can survive depths of up to 50 meters uh, compared to just the IP68 rating of the previous version. You can definitely take this swimming and take it in the shower and it will survive. So let's take a closer look at the design first. As aforementioned, it looks very similar to the Gear S3, but that's not a bad thing. The only downside would probably be the slightly larger bezels as a result of this rotating crown, which is a very ergonomic way of navigating the UI, but again adds to the overall thickness of the rim. The body of the Galaxy watch has been slightly upgraded though. It's now made out of stainless steel, even on the sides, so it feels very hefty, coming in at over 63 grams. And on the back, you have the continuous heart rate monitor and some basic uh, specs printed on here from Samsung. Taking a closer look at the UI next, it is running on Tizen OS 4.0, and the overall way of navigating the watch is pretty much the same as on previous uh, Samsung Gear watches. So if you've used those before, you'll be right at home. What is changed though is now you get some uh, additional kind of uh, software tricks, you actually hear clicking just like on a mechanical watch. In terms of the navigational wheel, as aforementioned, it still feels like one of the most natural and ergonomic ways of interacting with the smartwatch. It's almost a throwback to the days of the iPod nanos and those scroll wheels. Everything just feels very precise and in this case mechanical. Each click you can actually feel as the watch uh, rotates along its multiple pages and widgets and overall makes for a very intuitive experience. The bottom key can be tapped once to go into a list of all your applications, which are also in this round carousel view, which makes overall interaction very seamless. And I can also double tap on this bottom key to activate Big C. Like other premium smartwatches, we have the standard array of connectivity features including built-in GPS, which can track your location when performing sports and activities outdoors, there's continuous heart rate tracking, the typical array of accelerometers, motion sensors, and even a barometer that can detect pressure. Let's take a closer look at some of the built-in apps and uh, functions on the watch next. So as aforementioned, we have a number of different rotating panels or widgets that can display various notifications and commonly used apps. You can delete these and add more pages as you wish. You can also, of course, tap on these panels if you want to take a look at your averages throughout the week, and it shows it onto a kind of visual or graph below. Now, as you kind of saw there, there are still instances where the processor can get hung up and uh, freeze ever so often. So having the same amount of RAM and essentially the same speed for the processor as the past few years does mean that the computing power here could definitely see an upgrade. Have a quick demo of what the speakers sound like. Other built-in panels, including this barometer, can detect your elevation, changes in your surroundings. In addition, there's a panel that uses Flipboard to consolidate news, news feeds that you're interested in, whether that's music, science, politics, or just general news. You can then tap on these specific uh, news articles and then scroll down to kind of read them. Now, the watch uh, 
display itself is of course very vibrant. Samsung is taking advantage of this very dark theme on the watch to conserve on battery and also make text really pop. AMOLED displays of course don't consume power when the background is completely dark. So right now with just a few lines of text it's able to really save on battery life. In terms of different fitness and activities, Samsung has expanded on the catalog of sports that you can track. There are now over 39 activities, many of uh, which you can actually track automatically without even tapping on a specific mode. Mood estimation screen, this is one of the new features of the watch, and you're able to use the heart rate to kind of detect whether you are feeling excited, if you're feeling low in terms of mood, and through that it will tell you to then maybe breathe to uh, meditate a little bit. This isn't something that's tracked automatically, however, and you have to kind of rely on uh, manual controls to start the meditation, but Overall, it's still a nice little feature that Samsung built in. You see this ring slowly uh, expanding as well as decreasing as it tells you to exhale and inhale to hopefully calm yourself down when you are very stressed out. We can also see things like a message screen for a number of floors you've climbed using again the uh, barometer function here. Using motion trackers, it can also know if you're sitting down when those particular heart rate tests were performed. It will tell you your averages as well as how you stand compared to the entire week. The next screen here is going to be a list of commonly used apps, which can dynamically be changed depending on how frequently you open up uh, various programs in the background. The next panel over is for the temperature. It uses uh, internet connectivity to track things like weather for the week, as well as the humidity levels and the UV levels. These are not built-in sensors on the watch itself, but again, pulled from the internet. Now, as we start moving to the left from the main watch face, that's where we see more dynamic panels that will change depending on notifications you receive. Out of that sleep duration, you can see how long you've been restless compared to light and motionless, uh, which roughly translates into uh, light versus deep sleep patterns, as well as how that compares to the rest of the week. You'll also see things like emails, notifications from uh, Facebook, Twitter, etc. pop up onto the next screen over, which you can read on the watch in addition to reply. So you can use a voice memo, you can also use a uh, emoji to reply, and it also gives you a few kind of quick uh, ways of answering something, such as yes, yes please, no thanks, no Nope, which are intelligent. So when it comes to the built-in software experience, it's definitely more feature-rich than the typical Android Wear smartwatch, just because there's more, more content that Samsung throws in with Tizen out of the box compared to Wear OS. In terms of other applications, you also get a gallery, which you can take a look at pictures directly on the watch, again also missing from a typical Android Wear device. You can also take a closer look at things like Bixby, you can also go directly into news briefing from Flipboard. In addition, there are things like a PowerPoint presenter, which connects to your computer using Bluetooth, and then the watch acts as a remote, essentially, for going between different slides. So now let's talk about some of the downsides of the Galaxy Watch. Uh, one area I would say is definitely the Tizen OS Store, or as Samsung calls it, the Galaxy Apps. You'll definitely find a connection on here, but many of these apps seem to be more geared towards the smartphone experience than the uh, watch per se. But there are a few which are useful, such as gear navigation that is technically using Google Maps uh, for turn-by-turn -turn directions, and you can view maps on the watch. Quite useful uh, for many folks. With that being said, a downside here is many of these watch of these apps, if you're noticing, are designed from Samsung. And as such, they require you to also install a version of the smartphone app on your phone. So if you go down here it says this app will only work if this associated app is installed on your device. Uh, that includes many features from fitness tracking to just using the watch out of the box. It requires you to download at minimum 5 to 10 apps on your phone. It might be a detriment to again folks that aren't tied into the Samsung ecosystem. In the specific fitness mode it will uh, consume more battery because the GPS will be turned on and it's always going to be recording your heart rate to track uh, very specific data throughout each minute to minute. So if we tap on cycling for instance, we can see a lot of data that has been recorded here. For instance, our heart rate um, a change as well as our change in speed and velocity as we are continuing through this sport. You'll also be able to see kind of the workout session duration, calories burned, as well as a map of your path, uh, which is again a pretty cool feature. So overall, I would say that the fitness uh, tools built onto the Galaxy Watch are great. They are very accurate in terms of the GPS uh, reception. It's very quick to lock your position, even when you are indoors at times. And uh, the, the ability of it to track kind of your heart rate as well as the steps seem to be fairly accurate as well when I compared it with some other wearables uh, from Xiaomi, from Huawei over the past few days. So I was fairly satisfied with the accuracy of the sensors on board. Moving over to the app component, uh, we are talking about uh, the programs that you would need to 
install at minimum to have this uh, wearable be functional on a smartphone. So right now this is a non-Samsung smartphone and you have to install the Galaxy kind of wearable app. And from there, it actually prompts you to install another package from the store. So if you've watched our unboxing video, we ended up installing about four or five apps uh, to get this up and running. Now, after using it for about a day or two, I am encountering some bugs. The most interesting thing though is the app is technically not crashing because it's still running behind the scenes. It's still pushing software updates to the watch as necessary, it's still pulling through notifications on the watch, I haven't missed anything, but if I try to open up this app physically, it seems to always crash. And uh, it's not restricted only to this uh, Smartisan phone, I also tried it on a Xiaomi and it really did the same thing. So I would say that some of Samsung's app definitely needs some support uh, and more development. It seems like you'll definitely get the best experience if you already use a Samsung Galaxy Galaxy phone. Many of these apps, in fact, will be pre-installed and you don't have to take up more space. So overall, the UI itself is uh, very easy to understand, but I would still argue that Android Wear gives you a more seamless experience if you are using a third-party smartphone not designed by Samsung uh, when it comes to app support from the watch to the phone. So that's more or less it as far as our review of the Samsung Galaxy Watch. Is it a good smartwatch? Absolutely. But uh, I kind of expect it to be considering this very uh, premium price at $350. It gets all the essentials right, the construction and hardware are all top notch, it feels very well built uh, in the several days of using it, it hasn't received any scratches even though I was performing outdoor activities, so the entire weight and construction are very good. Uh, the way of uh, interacting with the UI of the watch using this crown is as seamless and beautiful as ever, it makes a lot of sense and I think it's one of the best implementations, albeit at the cost of larger bezels. It is using slightly outdated uh, kind of chipsets in that sense where we don't see a huge leap forward despite having a new uh, naming structure compared to Gear S3. Again, there's not too much that has changed radically inside. Uh, also, you do need to install a number of different apps on your phone, which if you aren't a Samsung user, could result in a slightly cumbersome experience. But all in all, again, if you want a smartwatch that is beautiful, very functional, with good battery performance, this is something to consider uh, as an alternative to other premium options on the market. Thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. That has been the Samsung Galaxy Watch.